<clears throat> the views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, Bunny, cough, cough. This is the beginning. This is where you cut. Well then, Bunny, let's talk about books. You see, you see, people always say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that I have been a loyal and somewhat hardworking employee at my local bookstore for well over 16 years. Yes. 16 <laughs> years. That's a long time. I started working with this company in the year in the year 2000 I, I'm uh, 2000. I'm wondering something though what do you do you I remember should... the first the first book you ever sold no but I remember the first customer I ever helped uh-huh because it, like I, I did like three days where I was reading uh, booklets and reading rules and information packets and then, he, and then I spent like a day being trained on our, our book search system yeah. and then I finally it was you know like almost a week later was, was finally the day where I'm on the floor and I'm helping people and I'm like okay well you know it, it, you'll do fine have confidence in yourself you can help people don't don't be afraid to ask questions and then suddenly this woman in a hurry runs up and she's like Junie B Junie B where's Junie B I need Junie B I need it now I, I, I'm in a hurry where's Junie B and I'm like uh, let me check on the computer don't check on the p computer just where is Junie B I need to know where the Junie B's are it's like I'm sorry but this is my first day I, I'm not sure what Junie B is is that a series do you know the author if you don't know who Junie B is then you're a horrible employee and she just walked off <laughs> now I know that Junie B is short for the Junie B Jones series of chapter books for kids and uh, over 16 years after that time I can say I hate the Junie B books I've never read a single one but because <laughs> that was the first customer I will always hate Junie B books. Yes. Always. I, I can I can totally understand. Yeah. Yeah. The first person I helped at the register uh, uh, gave me slack because I, you know, it was taking me a long time to figure out where the buttons were. And he says, what's taking so long? Yeah. And I said, sorry, this is my first time at the register. This is my first time ringing, ringing someone up. So my apologies. Uh, this is my first day on the register. It's like, this is your first day? Why did you get a job at a bookstore? You know they're all closing down. You can do things on computers. People aren't even buying books anymore. You'll be out of a job in a year. So I think... 16 years after that day, I can uh, I can safely say that whoever that guy is can suck it. Yes. But yeah, I, I, I started work at. Well, the, the, it's 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 oh. it's kind of caused a rise of like serious bookophile people. Yeah. You know, which is kind of nice to see. I don't know how long it will sustain. A, a yeah. printed book industry. Yeah. Especially with so many fuck so many people self publishing. Yeah. Yeah, that's the difficult part. People someone comes in, I'm looking for this book, it's called blank, and I'm like, okay, just because you found a book using Google doesn't mean that it's something that you can easily find at the store by the mall. Yeah. Just because you could find it online doesn't mean that it's something you can find a stack of at your local bookstore. This is self-published. This book doesn't really exist. And it exists on a hard drive somewhere. And I have an acquaintance on uh, Facebook, somebody I've met a couple of times, things like that, um, who is doing very, very well with her her zombie series, Morbid Hearts. Nice. But she did kind of have a leg up on a lot of other people who self-publish because she had written an episode of Star Trek Next Generation. Oh, that'll help. 
Yeah. Remember the one oh. where Picard is a probe and Picard passes out on the bridge and then he is in this other life? I think so. And he's got a wife and he's got he's got little kids and things like this and he like lives out an entire life until until kind of like the program was over and he just woke up yeah yeah no no i remember that and he was still on the bridge she wrote that episode nice good so she's doing very well she's gonna she's gonna put you out of a job so i'm sorry about that so i mixed feelings and I gotta go I gotta kinda go with <laughs> fuck her you okay we can, we can fuck her on. I'm sorry I like her and shit but I like you better so so yeah but you know that's sweet no, no, no offense to her really when I say fuck her yeah you yeah. know fuck I don't mean anything not. by it dang it we've been cussing dang it <laughs> oh I'm my god start clean I am sorry, man. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, I, I, I thought that was really funny, and I had to go with it. <laughs> it, is, it is funny. It is funny. But as such, I really do have my fingers on the pulse of the book world, and I am here yes. to show my pulsating fingers deep down your gaping mouth hole with this week's installment of Notes from the Bookstore. I love this uh, segment of our podcast so very very much yeah. and as always things are a bit tense at your local bookstore that's nothing new um we are all once again being subjected to the needless painful psychological torture that is secret shops secret shops secret shops yes that is when a major corporation decides to check up on various stores across America by getting a cranky 69-year-old angry white woman to come into your store and complain about everything. Yay! <laughs> Fun! <laughs> it's torture. It really is torture. Like, really, who came up with the idea of secret shops, with the concept of secret shops? Who invented them and why? Who was it that thought? We need to make sure that our stores are following protocol, following the rules. Yeah. Now, we can we can either send a representative from the company, someone who knows our business and knows each store's own individual challenges and tastes, someone with experience in our business. Mm-hmm. Or we could hire a Midwestern housewife and give her the power over who lives and who dies. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? That whole random housewife thing sounds good. Let's do that. That doesn't even sound safe in theory. I, 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 that sounds like an idea that they turned down before getting to the Manhattan Project. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? So we're getting secret shops every month now. And um, thankfully... There's a pattern to these secret shops, and the pattern is the bigger stores always get hit first because people clamor to go do a, a secret shop at a big, huge, massive bookstore. Yeah. But when it comes to a small rinky-dink bookstore that has a person like me in it, we're almost always last. So that's good. Yeah. There's a pattern to this, and we can we, – we can, we can then see what the other stores have done and, and, and what they've gotten right and wrong. And even though it's very early into May, some stores have already been hit by secret shoppers. And let me tell you, I am jealous and envious. I am gel envious. I am envious yeah. of stores that have already been hit. And let me tell you why. Because those stores that have already gotten hit by a secret shopper now have carte blanche <laughs> to be rude as hell to everyone. Yes. For the rest of the month, basically. You know? Mm-hmm. Stupid me, I'm forced to be nice to people. <laughs> but those but, just, above- but you are right. Just a very concept of it. You know? I mean, because a Midwestern housewife, just being a Midwestern housewife, 
can be difficult, shall we say? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah and now you want to give them power and authority? <laughs> yeah. A cranky 69-year-old angry Midwestern housewife has the power over who lives and who dies now yeah. in the company. Yeah. But I'm kidding, of course. I love customers in case any suits are listening. <laughs> and speaking of suits, speaking yeah. of suits, Bill O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly. He was recently fired from his show on Fox News, and thank God he was fired because, let me tell you, that man is a menace. He is a menace. He is a danger. He is a dangerous individual that needs to be stopped, and let me tell you why. Mm -hmm. He might not have his TV show anymore, but he does still have a literary empire. Yes. He is a wildly successful author he he has released a ton of books and he has a series he has a very popular series that sells through the roof his books include the titles and these are all actual titles killing kennedy mm -hmm. Kill lincoln killing Patton, killing reagan and even killing jesus yes those are all true those are all actual titles what i'm trying to say is bill o'reilly is a serial killer yeah. And he needs to be stopped before he kills again. Yes. But ne next book's going to be like killing your mom. Do you know what Bill O'Reilly is doing now? Podcast? He's in our land now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm going to push him on the playground and take his, take I his lunch. I think we own him. Yeah. But seriously, Bill O'Reilly is a dangerous man. He someone needs to get someone needs to get the knife out of his hand. So he, open he, open invitation to Bill O'Reilly to come on our podcast and see what kind of abuse you could take. Yeah. So yeah, all no, of our no. listeners, all of our loyal listeners, all of our new listeners, see if you can get that message to him, please. Go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sure someone can get that message across. So let's talk about some new releases. Let's talk about some new book releases that are out there. Senator Elizabeth Warren has a new book out, and it's called... Eh. <laughs> the full title is... Eh. What about me? And here's what the book's about. Hey, Americans, looking for someone to vote for in 2020? Eh. What about me? Yeah. Look, I know you're not excited about voting for me. I'm not excited about running. I'm not excited about anything. I am literally incapable of showing excitement about anything that happens to me in my life. I have what doctors call resting meh face. Yes. But eh, you could do worse. You could probably do worse. So when it comes to 2020, eh, what about me? So that's an exciting book. Really excited to read that. Um, popular children's book author Rick Reardon has a new book about to be released. He is a very popular and original, so original, so unique. He has a new book that's a, a, that just got released. His book is called Classical Mythology, but in Modern Times, Book 18. Eleanor... You always got to get into a crime fit right when I'm doing notes from the bookstore. I'll hold you, but you, I can't hold you, baby. I can't hold you when you don't want me to have any physical contact with you. Okay, see? You're doing it now. Let me. If you want me to hold you, I need to touch you. That's part of holding. Baby. 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 Uh. Did I just break out in Bieber? <laughs> Eleanor. But this Eleanor. Don't be a brat. I can't keep this up. All day, <laughs> Eleanor. Is she drifting off or something? 
No, Bella's taking a walk with her. Oh, I thought I was doing good. No, no, no. I, no, what I meant to say was she absolutely stopped crying because of your beautiful singing voice, Bunny. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it, it was all your voice. Thank you for that. Oh, no problem. So popular kids author Rick Reardon has a new book. It just got released. It's very original. It's called Classical Mythology, but in modern times, book 18. Should be very original and unique. Uh, unlike any of the other books he's written where he just gets classical mythology and sets it in modern times and calls it original. In fact, what I think is that very original kids book author Rick Reardon should team up with very original teen book author John Green. Yes. They could write a book about Sisyphus who is pushing a boulder uphill and then he falls in love with a manic pixie dream girl teenager who has a terminal illness and they have to go on a road trip where they discover a lot about themselves. Yes. That is a gold idea right there. That is just – that's gold, pony boy. And speaking of kids' books, famous baseball star Derek Jeter has a brand new book out in his very popular series for kids known as The Contract. His new book is called, wait, I wrote a kid's book? What? <laughs> it's all about a very attractive but absolutely clueless sports celebrity who can barely read or write, and yet he wakes up one morning to find that he's the author of a series of sports books for kids. <laughs> Very good, original, should be fun. And yes. here's a special message to you, the listeners, from your friends at your local bookstore. <clears throat> no, we don't sell the freaking unicorn fr frappuccinos you keep seeing on your social media, okay? <laughs> we don't sell it. Yes, we have a, a coffee shop, but it's not a Starbucks. We just sell Starbucks coffee. Therefore, we do not sell that hideous unicorn monstrosity, okay? But your local bookstore cares about its customers. So here's an easy, simple recipe for a homemade unicorn frappuccino that you can make at home, okay? Step one, get a My Little Pony. <laughs> Step two, melt it. Step three, yes. add three five-pound bags of sugar. Mm -hmm. Step four, mix. Boom, you got yourself a unicorn frappuccino right there. Yes, you do. Now, um, finally this week, your local bookstore, unfortunately, has to once again issue a recall notice. You know, we oh. don't want a recall notice. It, it's not fun for anybody, but we got to do it. This time, the recall notice is in regards to our latest e-reader, uh, the Texas Instruments Tab 9 Universe e-skimmer 8-inch mm -hmm. is the official title for it. We wanted a company, a solid uh, computer company to uh, help us create this e-reader and uh, a lot of companies just said you guys are still in business please get off of our premises so we got the great people at Texas Instruments to help us out with our e-reader except we can't call it an e-reader so it's an e-skimmer it's for people who want an e-reader but don't actually like to read Yes. so it's an e-skimmer that sounds like a genius idea no, it is. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. It has a short battery life, but that's okay because you're not going to actually read a whole book. Uh, and where I think you should go with that is to an E just the pictures. Nice. Yeah. An E book that just shows you the covers. Yes. Yeah. And I know what you're thinking. How could a $32.89 e-reader have a flaw in it? I'm as shocked as you are. You spend that much and you expect the highest quality electronic. Yes. But unfortunately, the e-reader, if you leave it plugged into an electrical outlet for too long, our e-reader may very well heat up. Uh -huh. now, now, unfortunately, I am not talking about the temperature. I'm not talking about the temperature of the device. Um, the e-reader gets hot and bothered uh -huh. and may end up sexually harassing you. Oh. 
And I should know, I actually purchased one of the first Texas Instruments Tab 9 Universe East Gimmer 8-inch once they came out. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I left my Texas Instruments Tab 9 Universe East Gimmer 8-inch plugged in for like two nights straight. I just left it yes. plugged in the wall, right? And then I woke up and my e-reader was massaging my butt. <laughs> Really. So anyway, long short, long story short, my e-reader and I are dating now. Oh. Have you I, changed your Facebook status yet? I, I think it's complicated. Pretty sure this e-reader is going to be the one. <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited about that. As and, you should be. Yeah. And that is it for this week's notes from the bookstore. And remember, boys and guys, you too can save 10% on all of your purchases by signing up for our pro customer program. Uh, there's fine here. It's not work on gift cards or newspapers or magazines. That's also important. Or books. Yes. But 10%. That that's that's ten yeah. percent on um, uh, Funko Pops <laughs> and puzzles. So yay! Oh, it also doesn't work on puzzles. Doesn't work on puzzles. Doesn't work make. on puzzles. Doesn't work on puzzles. But yeah, ten percent. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That is. Good. 